Good day and welcome back to Wimbledon Channel. I've decided to make another quick video thinking about teaching and the practice of teaching. All right, we can call it pedagogical ponderings if you want or literation, Wednesday wonderings. It's Wednesday afternoon here. Sport, a lot of the students go out. I've got the staff room to myself. That's often when I make videos. Uh, we're doing a, a looking at in professional learning at the moment, visible learning feedback. Looking at Shirley Clark and John Hattie. It's got a whole bunch of really interesting things in it that we've been thinking about. But one that really took my eye, and I think it's a really interesting thing for teachers to have a think about, and uh, they talk about the Goldilocks zone of teaching. I'll give you an example. I'll speed this up so it doesn't actually take as long as it does in real life. Three different zones of learning that students are in. And if you think about it, as teachers, we are the ones that are designing their learning and, and, and coming up with activities and nurturing the environment that learning occurs in. And often, this is a, a helpful way for us to think about what's actually going wrong sometimes. So there's three zones here, and this is often called the, Go uh, the Goldilocks zone. Three zones here, we've got the middle zone, comfort zone. Then we've got the learning zone with a bit more challenge. And then we've got the panic zone. Now there can be a whole bunch of ways of thinking about this. Uh, and it's not saying that students should always be in the learning zone. For example, uh, for many tasks, you want to make sure that a student has really understood and it's almost become second nature, especially with skills. So you might actually spend a whole bunch more time in the comfort zone so that, that the really kind of you hammer home the learning there so the students feel comfortable and it's almost second nature to them whatever the skill that you're doing so that when they take a bit more challenging a task that's something they don't have to think about and they can actually get on it with thinking cognitively how do I approach whatever this much more challenging task is. Now there can be a whole bunch of reasons why students get into that last zone, that panic zone. Perhaps you haven't explained the task well enough. Perhaps you haven't given them the steps that are required and that they are all of a sudden panicking going, I don't know how to do this. Perhaps the student has been in the comfort zone for too long and they don't and they're not confident enough to try new things and to fail in their learning. So there's a whole bunch of ways to think about this and I think it's a really helpful kind of analogy for you to think about with your with your teaching. So it, it's not necessarily saying that uh, there was some extra research done by Lomas et al. Uh, in 2017, which basically said it's not just, uh, you know, not too hard, not too easy. Uh, students can get in that, that learning zone with a really challenging task as long as it's engaging, as long as they've got some strategies that they can fall back on. But this is a really helpful analogy for a teacher thinking through what's gone wrong in an, in an activity. Maybe I haven't scaffolded it well enough. Or perhaps this task is too challenging now. Or perhaps I've been in the comfort zone with the students for too long. And I've tried to push them and they've gone too far. Or I've gone too far or too quickly. This is not a class-wide universal zone here. There'll be students with much bigger comfort zones and smaller learning zones because of various uh, personality factors or experiences that they've had in the past. Whereas you might have someone with a, with a really kind of a normal-ish sized uh, kind of comfort zone, huge learning zone, and they've only got this tiny panic zone because they're confident in who they are and when they meet challenges, they're very good at breaking it down and thinking it through. You might have someone with a massive panic zone that you need to take into account when you're doing an activity. I'm sure we have students like that where you need to think to yourself, okay, in order to get them in that learning zone, I need to give them extra strategies or I need to sit down with them and, and, and think through and say, okay, I know it looks big, but let's chunk it up, etc, etc. So I'll leave it there. I'm starting to ramble. Hopefully that's helpful for those teachers out there that are thinking through and going, well, uh, when are they being challenged? When are they panicking? And when do they seem to stuck in that comfort zone? And what can I do to get them out into that next level of learning at their best?